Hello there. Welcome back to The Closet Historian. If you're thinking, you know, it's a little loud, uh, you're, you're not wrong. Unfortunately, the air conditioning unit for my house is right outside the window down here in my office, so we will be listening to the air conditioning droning on today probably quite a lot in this video because, you know, it's July and it's been very hot and uh, I'm not going to be cruel and turn the air conditioning off in my house. Cruel to myself and anyone else living here. Um, so I, I won't do it, but we're gonna have to put up with some noise today. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm here in my pajamas, honestly. I'm wearing a Deathly Hollows t-shirt and some cat pajama pants that you'll, I'm sure, see some point throughout this video because I'm, it's a casual Sunday and I'm here in the sewing room to do some sewing. That's right. Crazy. I know. Um, you may remember in my sewing plans video for this summer that I talked about doing lots of different projects and it's finally time to do my second planned project for the summer. That's right. It's already July 21st and I'm just starting my second project. You may remember that I plan to do two projects in July and I do still plan on doing that uh, even though we only have a little bit of July left here. But today I'm going to work on doing the first 1940s dress in that green fabric. I will insert what that fabric looks like here now. Um, so we're using this green floral and ballerina print fabric to make a little 1940s dress. I'll put a couple of images here on the screen of different dresses from the 1940s that are inspiring for me, um, inspiring me for this project. I don't have a ton of fabric, so I know I don't want to do anything super crazy or dramatic or lots of, um, that requires lots of fullness because I don't have a ton of this fabric. It was something that I got um, like an off cut that was on sale, so I don't have a ton of it to work with. So we're gonna do something a little bit, a little bit fun, but uh, also quite simple as well. And I don't want to do a curved hem or anything that I have to like hang and bleh. So we're gonna do some things simple on this, but I am gonna still, still, I am gonna still show you how I modify my pattern into the design I've selected for this dress. So here at the front of the video, I will have the pattern drafting portion. I will put a Tam's time stamp. I can't talk today. A time stamp for when I start sewing if you would like to skip the pattern drafting um, down in the description below. So if you're not interested in pattern drafting, you can skip this first half of the video um, if that's something that you are not interested in. But let's um, go ahead and take a look at the design that I have drawn up here and then I will show you how I modify the pattern. Here we are on my messy desk here. Um, this is just a little sketch I did of today's dress design. I'm just going to do, um, usually on my dress bodice pattern, my standard sloper pattern that I use, I have a um, dart that comes up from the waist and one that comes in from under the arm. I'm going to move those arm darts, I'm going to move that fullness into a spot of gathering up here and do a little like asymmetric gathering drape here on the top of the bodice. Other than that, I'm just going to keep the round uh, neckline and then do a little puff sleeve. I'll actually use the same sleeve pattern that I used in my last video. I will put a card up to that um, last sewing project video somewhere in this summer sewing series where I did a white eyelet or made a white eyelet blouse and I did make a puff sleeve for that and I will just use that same puff sleeve pattern for this dress as well. And then for the skirt, I'm not even going to cut it out with a pattern piece. I am just going to use a length, like a rectangle of fabric and then pleat it down to the waist. Um, so I will just make sure it's full enough to go across my hips, of course, and then I will just pleat the fullness to the waist of this bodice. A really simple way of doing a skirt. Um, nothing, you know, very precise, I suppose, but I, I don't think it's going to matter. It's just going to be a simple little flowy, springy summer dress. Um, so that's just how I'm going to do the skirt, quite simply. So this is just my little sketch here. Green floral rayon dress. Let's get started. All right, here we are over on the trusty blue drafting end cutting table here. Um, I have a piece of alphanumeric paper ready to go for drafting this pattern as usual. And I do have my bodice front and back, my block pattern, my bodice standard bodice pattern here ready to draft a new version for this dress. I actually do have a pattern already made in my store of them over there for this style of dress, but because I want to show you guys how to do this pattern modification from a two dart bodice. So if you perhaps have a two dart dress pattern that you like, um, you could do this modification to it and see if it works. Uh, cut out a muslin first, just if you're not familiar with doing pattern drafting. I always want to make sure um, you make a muslin or a mock-up to make sure you have everything uh, in place, ready to go before you cut into any nice fabric, especially if, like me, you may not have much of it. Um, but I will show you how to do the pattern modification. As for the sleeve for this dress, this is my standard sleeve pattern you might remember from last time as well. And then this is the puff sleeve that I drafted from it last time. I just split and added some fullness. Um, just not a ton of fullness either, and only fullness of the um, sleeve top, not here at the cuff, um, which makes it easier to hem this as well because it's straight on the edges. So I can just turn that up and hem the sleeve. Um, but I'm just going to be using the same sleeve 
puff sleeve pattern that I used in my last project in this summer sewing series. So we have the sleeve pattern already ready to go and I can put this little standard one away. So what I have done here, um, a little bit differently than I normally do, normally I will just trace one half of my pattern because the dress will be symmetrical. Um, because this dress is going to have an asymmetric design on the front, I have actually traced the full front pattern piece. So this is the, you know, this is one side of the front and the other. Um, so I've done so with a marker just so you guys can see. Uh, normally I would trace in pencil, um, but I just wanted to make sure you all can see what I'm doing. So it's a little bit less precise to have a thicker marker line like this, but that's why I've done that is just so you all can see what I'm doing here. Um, of course, you're at an odd perspective here because I do not have a good way to film down on my table, unfortunately. But what I have done is I've just traced my pattern into a full version. So like normally this would be put along a fold to cut one full front, right? So I'm just uh, making one full front of a pattern piece here. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're gonna take the darts that come in from under the arm and we're gonna move that fullness into a section on one shoulder. Um, so there, all, all that uh, fullness is gonna be gathered into just one of the like shoulders, one of the arms. Um, and the way to do that is we're gonna create a little bit of a yoke up here. So I'm just going to draw a line. I just chose, um, thinking about like, this is your armhole here. Um, so like, do you want your gathering to go under into your armpit area? No, you kind of want to keep it high enough that it's like still in the shoulder. I might even come up a little bit more here and go across here. Now I often talk about or show my patterns. There's no seam allowance here. You can see like along here, there's no seam allowance. Nothing is, um, marked on either my tracing or on my pattern because it's just included. Like I know, that there's seam allowance along all these edges included. But when I have to add seam allowance is when I cut into this. So if I make a seam here, that is where I'm gonna have to add seam allowance. So that is going to be true of this little piece we're doing today. So I'm gonna cut or draw a line here and I will cut this little shoulder bit off and then I will have to add seam allowance to this piece and to the edge of this piece so that it's the same size again when those eventually get sewn together. Um, so I will show you a little bit more about that in just a minute. So again, just consulting with my little sketch here, not that it really matters if I change things on the fly, if I should like to. Um, I'm just showing how I've drawn this line, cutting up into the neckline, just like it is here on my little sketch. So we will cut this piece off and I will add some seam allowance to the edge on here and on here. Um, and then I will close these darts and swing that fullness up into this area. And that will eventually get gathered down and sewn along here. Um, to create this style of bodice. I am just going to keep the waist starts. You can technically move all of the fullness up in here if you want, but it might look a little strange to have that much fullness in one area, especially because I have larger darts on my bodice pattern than like a standard one because I've done a full bust adjustment to my pattern or my pattern includes a full bust adjustment. It just means a larger pinch gets taken out to create like a larger cup size almost in the garment. So. I have more fullness inherent in my pattern. So if I were to use all that fullness in an area, in one area like this, it might look uh, a little crazy depending on the fabric. So I'm just gonna do the side darts into up here. Um, and I might, this is my standard uh, sloper pattern neckline. It's very close. Again, if you imagine there is seam allowance already included here, so it'll be a little bit lower than this, but I think I am just gonna take another half inch off of that just so it is not too high and close of a neckline, um, although it is drawn quite close here on my little sketch. But again, I will just change things as I go if I feel like it, because this is a project for me. This is why I sew for me and not really for other people, because I like to be able to make decisions on the fly. Uh, if something goes wrong, only I will ever know about it, things like that. So uh, I will cut this and add seam allowance and show you what that looks like. And then also lower this neckline by a half inch. I'm just going to cut off a half inch basically here. And then of course that will mean the neckline will be another half inch down. See what I'm saying? Kind of? Yes, maybe? Sort of? Well, I'll show you. So I ended up just trimming a little quarter inch off that neckline, just a little bit lower than the closest maximum. And then I did just slice this shoulder piece off and I will add seam allowance here. And so now I will go ahead, I'm going to draw, draw on the apex point um, just by connecting these two darts. Find the apex point here. I will slash this dart in. So to show you what I mean by um, drawing points up into this area, this fullness I want to close and it has to go somewhere. So it will open up up here and that will just be gathered into that little gathering detail we've added. So I'm gonna close this dart and swing it open up here. 
and I'm going to close this dart on the other side and even though this is a long bit it's going to open up over here. Okay so we are technically doing what's called spla uh, slashing and spreading here. Uh, that's what this kind of dart manipulation is often termed. So I've put my slashes in. This is basically hinged so I haven't cut all the way through this point. But what I'm going to do here is close this dart and I will tape that shut which of course you can see opens the fullness up over here and then same on this side I will hinge this side closed um, so all this little excess will be cut off and now we just have a side seam with no dart in it and then again the fullness gets opened up over here so now of course the pattern piece is going to look crazy and maybe I'll cut one out of muslin um, just to show you guys what this looks like before I cut it out of my actual fabric um, because maybe if you're doing something like this at home and you start it starts looking whack <laughs> and you're not as com comfortable and familiar with pattern drafting you might be like ah uh, and you don't really want to put this down on your nice fabric and cut it out without seeing what's happening um, so perhaps I will cut a muslin one or a scrap fabric uh, one to show you how this does look when it's made up so that you can feel a little more comfortable if your pattern piece starts to look like this and you're like wait a minute that doesn't look anything like clothes um, so I'll show you what this looks like uh, after I have filled these in. I'm just going to smooth this line up here, um, which is the edge that will eventually be gathered back down into our original little shoulder. So that whole length will be gathered into this small area here. So I've taped these um, sections shut and then I've filled in this area here and then I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line smoothing this area here um, so it's not as wonky you can drop straight across and it's like fine but like you can just smooth it it won't unless you're like adding a curve you're not going to do anything crazy to distort it as long as you just smooth that line nicely focus camera okay well it doesn't want to focus so basically i've just drawn a sketchy line connecting these two parts which does mean that this center area a little bit gets added but because it's just going to be gathered and draped Again, if you draw a huge curve, it'll create like a weird puffiness here, but a little bit like this should be fine. So I'm just gonna smooth this area here and I will. Okay, so what I've done here is I took the pattern piece that I just drafted and I just traced it in uh, or on a piece of muslin and cut that out. I'm just going to pin these darts closed with some little straight pins so you can get an idea of what this pattern piece looks like in fabric, what it will look like when it comes together for the garment. Here's our little shoulder piece. This is where it's gonna get gathered into here. Um, I kinda just threw some gathering stitches in here um, based off like imagining how much of the shoulder area I don't want to have gathering down here by the arm very much. Just it's gonna be nicer, easier to sew if that area is smooth. So I'm just gonna keep the gathering up on the like first area first portion of this, again, leaving a little bit here at the neck too, just so I can keep the gathering kind of in the middle of that area. Um, you could be very exact about it and use this and like mark your fabric and then only gather in that area. I'm just eyeballing it because again, I've been sewing a long time. Um, so I'll just go ahead and I'll draw these gathering stitches in, pin these closed and show you what this pattern piece will look like so that you can see why, you know, something that is such an odd shape doesn't need to be, although intimidating, uh, you don't need to be scared if your pattern piece comes out looking a little Frankenstein-tastic because that's a good thing in this case. This is good because I discovered that I left a little bit too much smooth here at the neckline or at the um, armhole. I think I will come in a little farther out with the gathers just so it's not so bunched up in the center here. Um, so even I have discovered something making a mock-up shocking. Um, <laughs> of course, this is always a good thing to do. I often skip it. Uh, it's, I think it's, you know, even if you are quite positive like I am that because you're drafting from a sloper that fits you that something will fit it's always you're never gonna go wrong you know it's never gonna lead you astray having done more work so um, here I have gathered that crazy shape here our darts are pinned I've gathered that crazy extended shape into that small section like so this will be sewn along here. So I will go ahead and pin that and then I'm going to go take this and put it on my little cheapy Joann's dress form to show you how this will look so we can feel confident going in and uh, continuing on possibly, you know, cutting it out of our real fabric, things like that. I, when people ask me, oh, what dress form do you use? I am like, it's a cheap one from Joann's and I don't use it. I use it to like throw something on. <laughs> uh, I don't use it as a bar barometer for fit uh, because this girl 
is not a double D and I am. So even if I have this adjustable form adjusted to close to my measurements, I would never use it to drape anything that I would expect to fit me. And I don't use it as like, oh no, this is gonna be how it will fit me. No, no, <laughs> this girl is a very different shape than I am. So I use it much more as like a rack to throw things on less as I get a barometer for fit, um, as I said. So, um, but this is the idea of like how you can see how that all that gathering comes into the shoulder here. And then that is what the bodice looks like. Of course, it doesn't fit her very well, but like we see what the shoulder modification has done. And I'm gonna throw this kind of like over my body too, just to make sure that all this fullness is indeed corrected by having some bustage in there, um, which I assume will be the case. You can see some wig styling mannequins in the background here, uh, ignore those. But uh, I'm just gonna throw this on myself as well to make sure it does fit me better than it does this mannequin and then I will continue on with this project. I'm like not wearing anything, but this does fit me, again, much better than our friend here in the background. Actually, my roommate in college named this dress form Donna, so it fits me much better than Donna uh, because I have things to fill out all that space, um, whereas Donna does not. So lessons from that muslin mock-up. I am just going to mark this line here onto the fabric um, and then gather from there onward. I, I think I did it a little bit wider starting the gathering here and I do think I need that extra little bit of space there for those gathers to sit nicely. And then this area where I do have a little bit of added fullness, I am just going to curve this and curve it back up um, because I think that was actually adding just a little bit too much fullness in that area that I don't want. So I will actually curve that back down and up. Um, I think with the silkier fabric, it won't matter as much, um, but in that like cotton muslin, it did get a little bit puffy here. Again, if you were wearing, if you were working with like a silk or a chiffon or something, I don't think it would matter because it would have a lot of drape to it. Or if you got this on the bias, maybe it would be fine. Um, but just because I'm gonna be cutting it on the straight grain on not a very stiff fabric, um, Shally is quite flowy, but I still think I'll just ease that out of there and then I won't have to worry about it as much. But then other than that, this bodice piece, um, oh, and lowering the neckline a tiny, tiny bit. So this is our, it looks wonky as all hell, but this is our neckline. This is the center front of that neckline actually, is this blue line from when we originally traced, when I originally traced this pattern piece. So I will just lower that a tiny bit more here at the center front neck, which again, you can't really tell. That's why you modify your neckline before you do this kind of a huge modification because to modify the neckline now, you really have to be like, wait, what? Which one of these curves is that even? Uh, which luckily it's up here, but uh, I will. So I'll take a little bit off of there. I will smooth this down a little bit more and I'll show you what that looks like. See the two modifications, little fixes I made after that mock-up. I just cut another little bit, like a little over a quarter of an inch off the center front of the neckline and smoothed that out. So we don't need that anymore. And then I did just end up because I smoothed this line too much, uh, I did let it dip back down to my original seam allowance and then back up. So um, I basically had smoothed this curve kind of quite completely. And I decided that I will follow the wonky, wonky line there. Um, you know, why not make this piece as strange looking as possible, really, you know, since it's already such a funny one, but that's what the front of this bodice looks like. Um, of course we have our little shoulder piece too. Um, so that's the front. For the back, I'm actually going to just use my basic bodice uh, block back. I'm not doing anything different to it. I'm not changing anything about the back. The only thing I will do is I will just make sure when I trace the back that because I lowered the, um, well, actually, shoulder seam still seems to match up. Make sure that, oh, see, since I lowered the neckline in the front or like, um, moved it a quarter of an inch in, I will just have to do that to the back as well um, so that that will still match up here at the shoulder seam. So make sure if you change the neckline of the front to check and make sure it will still line up with the back um, or change it in the back as well to match. So here's just a traced copy of my bodice back. Um, I actually forgot to cut out the bottom here. Uh, I am just gonna go ahead and make a facing pattern by laying this on top here and just kind of tracing out a facing pattern. So I'll make a facing pattern for this. I should have made one before I did the pattern modification to the front. Um, so that's gonna be a fun, I'll show you how I do end up doing one for the front as well, but I'm just gonna make facings to finish the inside of the neckline for this dress. So I will go ahead and make the patterns for those now. So here is a little back facing that will 
work for this dress and then I will go ahead and do the front one. So say you're silly like me and forgot to do a neckline facing pattern before you did all this craziness over here. Um, so your neckline is now, where is this line? This. Um, so you can just tape that there for a second and draw your um, neckline still um, because this isn't too crazy. You still have your neck intact. But if you did uh, an even bigger modification up here, um, sometimes if it's asymmetric like this, you can just use this side and then imagine that as a fold. Um, so you can do your facing that way, um, which is how I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to create a front facing using this side of the pattern because the neckline is the same on either side when it's done. Um, so you'll see how that works out when I'm sewing this in uh, some, sometime tomorrow probably when I'm sewing that part of this dress. So I have my front pattern piece all fixed up, um, little modifications from making a mock-up. Turned out it was really worthwhile to do that just so I could make sure I remember to smooth this not too much because I was incorrect there. Um, you know, I can only remember so many things at any one time and smoothing, yes, curving, no. Um, <laughs> my little shoulder piece here, a facing for the front neckline here that I will cut on a fold. So I have all the fronts done. I have my back pattern piece and the back facing as well. And then I have my same puff sleeve pattern that I used last time that I may or may not have gotten wet in between. Goodness. Um, so I have my pattern ready for basically the top half of this dress. Now the bottom half I'm not going to make a pattern for because I'm just going to take the one and a three quarter yard piece of fabric, cut it to probably 30 inches long all the way across and then pleat that down to the waist just to 30 inches, which is my waist measurement. I'm not going to do that in any particular specific way. I'm just going to pleat that length of fabric as the skirt. Um, that isn't very wide for a skirt. Uh, you would you know, possibly want more if you wanted it to be quite flowy and stuff, but that's, you know, part of the reason I'm doing a little skirt very simple like this and just pleating it down is because I don't have a lot of fabric um, to cut out anything more complex. I'm just going to pleat the length of it onto the bodice and that will be that. Um, so I will go ahead and lay out my fabric and cut these pieces out now. Uh, 
Um, so here we are. I haven't really updated you since I cut everything out and I've done a little bit of work since then. Um, I did film most of it, but I just didn't talk about it really. Um, it's not uh, things that you haven't seen me do before, I guess, maybe kind of. Um, I'll, I'll explain everything I've done um, in cards or, or in um, title sequences or voiceover. Um, in some way or another, I will explain everything I've done so far, basically. Um, but where I'm at right now is everything is cut out. The darts are sewn in the bodice pieces here. I have the sleeves sewn up. Um, that was pretty easy. The facings are sewn up. I did interface the neckline facing and then I did interface the little shoulder bit. I did cut that uh, with the ballerinas in the center because I thought that would be the most fun to have the ballerina in the center of that little piece up here. So we can make sure to showcase that. I won't put a brooch over it or anything like that. Um, so I have those pieces over on the ironing board ready to go. I am now going to, I sewed the darts in the front and back bodice um, pieces first, and then I'm going to go ahead and serge the edges of those. I did serge the edges of the um, sleeves already. I did do a test piece on that to make sure that that would work fine. Um, but now I will go ahead and serge the edges of my bodice front and back pieces, and then also the edges of the facings and that little shoulder piece. Um, and then that's probably all I'm going to do tonight. And then I will finish sewing this dress together tomorrow with all of you. So I am going to serge those things, and then I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to watch a little bit of Cowboy Bebop for the 18,000th time. But this is the first time I've ever watched the dub because I usually watch the sub, so um, it's interesting listening or watching it in English for the first time, because I've never done that before. But uh, that's all I'm going to do tonight, and then I will catch up with you guys tomorrow when we can finish putting this dress together, and I will show you how I finagle the skirt and all that stuff, so I will see you then. problem with doing these videos while I'm sewing is that I can't play music in the background so I have to pause things in order to not have copyrighted music in the background which means I have to sew in silence which you know is a meditative prospect okay so I have my darts here in the front bodice piece sewn in everything is surged now so that the edges I don't have to worry about them um, this of course up here is our neckline this needs to go here to complete that neckline, but of course we have to gather all this funny edge so that it will fit into this and we will have our gathering on the front like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some gathering stitches along here. I will mark um, you know, in a little bit like on the pattern piece. Um, I'll bring that over and show you. Um, where I want to start the gathering because again I don't want it to be right next to the arm but I do want to bring out a little bit more than I did in that mock-up. Um, so then I will put two lines of gathering stitches in here, gather that down, sew it onto this piece and then we can sew the front and back bodice pieces together, the facing on, and the sleeves. So um, this is day two of this project. I'm going to start with some gathering here. Okay, so I have my two lines of gathering stitching up in here, um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and sew this little piece on. Uh, I'm glad my little ballerinas came out quite centered on this so that they will show, um, again, the half inch will disappear on each side, of course, with the seam allowance, but little ballerinas there on the top there. Um, I did position this, you can see where like the, my end of my darts are, so that there was blank space um, on this like uh because there were little flowers that could so easily end up like on like like a pasty <laughs> on the nipple so i kind of just made sure that that wasn't a problem um but i didn't really um take into account where these ballerinas ended up because of that because i was more worried about getting the blank space where it needed to be less about where the print needed to be so i am glad i made sure to center one of these up here so just to highlight the fun little novelty bit of this print um i will go ahead and just pin this here and sew along there and then I can sew the back pieces along the side seams and the shoulder seams so that the bodice is together. Okay so I have 
all that area gathered into our little neckline yoke here. I did actually, um, so we can see it's all gathered in here and it's, you know, a little bit bulky, um, especially with this interfacing in here too. So I wanted to not have that fullness puffing this out. Um, so in order to just make sure that it stayed kind of where I wanted it, I just added a row of like top stitching or almost like edge stitching along the top here to hold that seam allowance in the upward position. Um, so it'll be kind of be, you know, it's means there's a bit of bulk along underneath here, which I just don't think will be seen that much, but I'd rather that bulk be facing up and this uh, area not be like, have any puff underneath it, nothing to make this even puffier. So um, it's just a little bit steamed down now. And then now that my neckline is, you know, looks like it's supposed to with the rest of this sewn in here, I can add my um, side or my back pieces and I will sew them, you know, along the shoulders and along the sides and then I can put my neckline facing on. Here is the bodice as it is right now. Oh, it's the iPhone is recognizing this face. Um, so here's the bodice as it is currently. I've got the sleeves set in. We got a little bit of gathering puff up here. I have some stitching here to hold that as I like. I've got my facing in here. Um, the interfacing I used on my facing and on this piece, technically it's like a medium weight interfacing and I would prefer it a lighter weight but not enough that I was gonna to go to Joann's uh, to, you know, like get one. So this facing is showing a little bit here. We'll see if it lays better on a person, you know, whatever. <laughs> I wasn't gonna to drive to get different interfacing. And now that I pointed it out, you probably can tell. But you know, just forget I said anything and it should be fine. So now I have, this fabric is just draped on here to cut this panel that we're gonna use, I'm going to use for the skirt to 30 inches long, let's say, 30 inches long, and then I'll hem it to be like 28 maybe, something like that. I like a long skirt, let's be honest. Uh, I like a long skirt. Um, so, oh, sorry about my 34. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this down. Because I'm putting on the straight grain, I'm just gonna cut it to be a rectangle that's 30 inches long, and then I will pleat it to 31 inches, and then I will attach it to our bodice friend here. Um, I probably will put a waist stay, a twill tape along that as well too, just so that that seam doesn't stretch. Um, and I probably will sew along that twice, I guess, just to kind of, I don't know, for some reason with this lightweight fabric, having one line of stitching in the waist to skirt just seems very flimsy. So I might put two lines of stitching in there and a waist stay. Um, and then this will just need a zipper and a hem. 
So uh, getting, getting there now, getting there, I will cut the skirt down and then I will pleat that so to the top here. We're getting somewhere. Okay, so I figure I should explain a little bit what I'm doing with the skirt here. So for that uh, piece of fabric, it was about a yard and three quarters wide and um, it was or long, I mean, and then um, 45 inches wide. I just actually ended up slicing a little indent into the fabric and then tearing along the grain line. That's something you can do. I will possibly like link a blog post or a, a um, video I can, if I can find one about why you can do this instead of cutting it. Um, with a slippy fabric like this, it was moving a lot around a lot and instead of just trying to cut a straight line all along the length of the fabric, I decided just to tear one. Um, when you tear a fabric, if it is tear compatible, kind of, some not all fabrics you can do this with, but some you can, um, you kind of just cut a little notch into the fabric, pull each side with like an even pressure and just like rip them apart and it, it won't rip, you know, randomly. It'll rip right along that grain line. So it'll rip a completely straight line. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you're cutting a straight line when you're doing your scissors, if things are moving around, especially with this like movie fab, like a fabric that moves around like this, you just know it will be straight. So I know that it's 30 inches long now. Um, so hopefully I can find some sort of blog post or video from somebody else explaining that and link it in the description for you. I'll show you sometime what I mean when I'm doing, this is more of a diary, less of a tutorial. Again, if you aren't, you know, be able to follow along without a pattern anyway, so. Um, but that's how I got to here. Now, what I did was I just surged the raw edges here. This is actually the salvage up here. So this is not gonna fray, no, no problem there. Um, what I did was I found the center of my piece of fabric. This is the actual center of this length. So I had some on this side, some on this side. And I just started, uh, I knew I wanted the very center front to be smooth. And then I just started um, arranging pleats so that from here at the center to the end was 15 and 5 eighths of an inch. Um, basically that's the 15 inches for my 30 inch waist plus the 5 inches of an inch that I want for my zipper. Um, so that I, I arranged these pleats, they're actually bigger here on the front than in the back because I don't care what the back looks like as much. Um, so these are a nice, um, like, two inches on each side, four inch pleat, four inch pleat, a three inch, and then two twos. Um, just using less fabric as I went along as I started running out. Um, but basically this is just to make the skirt lay nicely over the hips and everything. Hopefully this will look okay. Um, it's not like I, I don't pleat skirts very often. I usually cut them out as an A-line or circle skirt or a pencil skirt. I don't normally do straight rectangle skirts like this. Um, so it is something I'm less used to doing. But basically I just, you know, figured out each pleat as I went along. I did one on one side, copied it on the other, one on the other side, copied it on the other. They're about two inches apart. Well, not about, they are two inches apart, uh, the pleats. And then of course this will be the zipper here. Again, I don't mind it being smooth over the center back either. That should lay fine. Um, so this is how I've just, how I've pleated the skirt. And now I will go ahead and, and just do a line of like stay stitching to keep these pleats along this skirt here and then I will pin it to the bodice. Crazy enough, I know, wild. Okay, so I have the bodice and the skirt attached. I did just put a little piece of rayon tape in there just for a little bit more security. Um, so it has a little bit of a waist stay, nothing crazy like twill tape or anything though. Um, then I have the back sides, right sides together basically is what this is. The way I typically do zippers as of right now, um, which is kind of, you know, a lazy, lazy man zipper because as we know, I am not the, I, I, I like to uh, be lazy. Um, so basically what I do is I sew the center back together with a like large stick, stitch length, stick length, stitch length, um, like the largest stitch length. And then I will iron that. And then I will use that to, um, I will pin my zipper underneath 
and then sew it with that seam shut. Um, so that's kind of how I keep everything straight in the back. I don't even change the zipper foot on my machine, as some of you noticed in my recent thrift flip video. I will just use the regular presser foot because I, say it with me everyone, am lazy, that's right. Um, so I'm just going to sew this center back shut, uh, right sides together, and then I will show you what I mean when I um, come to do the zipper. I don't have a zipper that matches perfectly. I'm just going to go with this sage green colored one because I don't. This is the best match out of all the ones I have, and I don't remember there being a particularly great, like sort of darker sap green, grass green color zipper at Joann's anyway. So it's not like worth it to really wait. So I'm just gonna put in this one, and it won't really matter because it won't be seen much. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this seam. Okay, so the center back seam of my dress is sewn. Basically, I just have a large stitch length for the area that will eventually open for the zipper. And then about here, I switched to a short stitch length and batch stitch and like sew the seam properly for the rest of the way down the skirt. Um, so from here up, I will remove the stitches once I put the zipper in and from there down, it's just sewn normally. Um, you can kind of see where that transition is here. So what I'm going to do is I, I ironed the seam open, obviously, um, and I'm going to turn the dress inside out and then pin the zipper underneath. And I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so now I have the dress right side out um, and I have opened up that seam. Basically, the reason I sewed that together was in order to press it open so that I could have this sharp line uh, pressed into the back of the garment uh, perfectly aligned, you know? Um, and so now I'm going to, I laid my zipper in here, boop, along here, and I'm just gonna sew along to sew this folded edge down to the zipper and then I will sew this side so that it laps a little bit. So there'll be a stitch along here and then I will have a effectively a lapped zipper here down the center back. So it's kind of my lazy zipper insertion. Um, so I'm just going to sew along where these pins are here as quite close to the edge, um, catching the edge of this folded side and then I will pin this like so and then sew along the zipper teeth basically to make a little lap zipper. So here is the dress with the like lapped zipper, um, sort of like the this edge pinned slightly over where I just sewed the other side down to the zipper. You can see it's just sewn down in there. This is just pinned over to look like a lapped zipper when it's done. Um, and the reason I don't even bother changing my presser foot, what I do is I just line up the edge of the presser foot with the zipper teeth. So I can feel the edge of the zipper teeth underneath this area here. And I just line that up, butt that up against there. And then I just move, um, this dial here will move my needle along so I just move that as close as I can to this edge, which will create this much of a width between where my stitching line is and where the zipper teeth are. Again, if you switch to a zipper foot, you can get much closer, but I don't care. So <laughs> we're just gonna do it like this. Um, and I will just sew along here, removing the pins as I go, and sew this so that it looks like a uh, lap zipper here. Okay, so my zipper is in. So you can see I just sew this edge along there and then this side ends up looking like this but then it looks like so once it is finished um, and again the zipper is of course you know not the perfect match for this but I don't care um, this is kind of nice how these kind of flow here this is unfortunate <laughs> but again we know I didn't have very much fabric here so it wasn't exactly like I could plan these things um, so I have these two girls riding next to each other on the back but oh well um, the rest of the back looks quite nice, at least. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand stitch the facing, like tack it down at the shoulder seam in here. So I'm just going to tack this down a little bit so that the facing stays. And then I will hand sew all this down, basically. Um, so just, you know, folding the facing so that there's a nice smooth edge and everything up here. I'll put a hook and eye in here. That way this top of this will stay shut. I have a way to keep it shut at least. Um, 
Again, you would probably want to use interfacing in here, but because I didn't have anything lightweight around and I don't plan on abusing this dress because um, I have uh, so many dresses, uh, I don't, you know, usually wear a dress more than once or twice a season, which sounds extremely excessive, but uh, oh well. Um, so I don't like get a ton of wear out of them. So I don't, I don't worry about, you know, the zipper and a lightweight fabric like this. It's not going to have a lot of strain on it. It's not like I'm not like I'm wearing it every day. Um, it should be fine for now, um, as long as I take care of it and I plan on doing so. So uh, I'm just going to tack down a little bit down here, tack down my facings, uh, and then I will get to the hem. Okay, I have just uh, finished putting a hook and eye up here and sewing my facings down. And now I have just double turned the hem here and I'm just gonna go ahead and hem the bottom of the skirt by hand. Okay, I'm just gonna hang it on the ring light to be able to steam this dress now so I can try it on for you. Show, show you all what it looks like now that it's finished, but it is all done now. And in fact, thank goodness because uh, that, that was all the thread of that color that I had uh, finishing that hem. I actually had to use a little bit of forest green thread on a few of the stitches, but no one will know but you and I. Um, so I'm just going to head, gonna go, so I'm, I can't talk anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a quick little steam and then I will try this on for you and show you what it looks like in the end. This is the finished dress. This is how it turned out. Uh, I think I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It turned out just like I had planned, how I had hoped. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I'm glad to have finally got another project off of that summer sewing project list that I gave you all earlier in the uh, in the summer here. I have been putting off my sewing a little bit as, as is usual, but luckily, again, like I said in that first video, having it on my YouTube schedule does seem to force me to actually get sewing work done. I am working on a lot of writing right about now. I'm allowing myself to focus on doing some fiction writing, so um, I haven't had the most time for sewing, but I did make this dress yesterday and today. Uh, I do think it would be faster for me to sew things if I weren't stopping to film every few seconds, but again, would I get any sewing done at all if I weren't filming it? Hmm. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows, you guys? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my little sewing diary of putting this dress together and may have picked up a few helpful tips along the way. Um, these aren't really tutorial videos because, of course, um, my patterns are not available anywhere, so you can't really exactly follow along, but I do hope that they are either entertaining or a little bit helpful as well for any of you who are um, newer to sewing, maybe pick up a few things or pick up my bad habits, you know, uh, see how not to do something things like that. In any case, thank you as always for stopping by here on the channel today, and I will see you again soon. Bye.